The Titanic and her sisters are often portrayed in the media as the grandest and most luxurious ships afloat at the time. They definitely were the biggest and most technological, but were they as grand and as luxurious as their competitors or even considered fashionable with current trends and styles? Olympic and Titanic were conceived on the back of the introduction of Kuna's brand new liners Lusitania and the Mauritania. These were the biggest, grandest and fastest ships at the time, so the White Star Line wanted to build some new ships to compete with Cunard's new superliners. Instead of speed, they decided to compete with size and luxury, and thus the concept was born. Many people would disagree that Olympic and Titanic's interiors were as grand or as luxurious as the Lusitania and Mauritania, as they had multi-decked high dining saloons and opulently decorated rooms with glass domes and elegant fittings. The Olympic class had none of that, instead having single-storey dining rooms and a more modest decorating style and the use of older period style interiors. Looking aside of amenities like the gymnasiums and the swimming pools that made them luxurious, I'm looking at the interior styles and decorations. It's easy to look at photographs and compare interiors and judge which ships seem more grand and opulent today. However, you've got to look at what was happening at the time with fashions and interior design. The Olympic class were built right in the middle of the Edwardian era and which was interesting at the time for technology and innovation. Times were changing fast from the old Victorian era and life was starting to get a little easier with the introduction of new everyday technologies and more opportunities were opening up for people to get rich quick. This brought new wealthy people into the upper class society and influencing a whole new style of design and fashions known as the Gilded Age. The standard Edwardian style is a neo-baroque style of an old French renaissance that used old French styles as inspiration and merged them with old Dutch, Germanic and Italian, as well as imperialistic influences brought back to Britain from the British Empire. But other new styles were emerging too. With the hustle and bustle of everyday life, large factories producing black smoke and toxic air, people were starting to get influenced by nature and country life. This was the basis of the new fashionable style of the arts and craft movement, a more humble and country feel inspired by nature and handcrafted design. This movement was popular in England throughout the Edwardian era and then later in the US. With almost everything being mass produced in factories, the arts and craft movement provided refuge and a new trend for all things handmade and crafted. This style then merged with similar styles happening in Europe and created another new style of Art Nouveau, which exaggerated the arts and crafts style with nature design plant-like curves and large open spaces filled with light and fresh air. Art Nouveau was a very popular style in the Edwardian era and later developed into the more famous Art Deco. These were the styles that were seen as trendy and fashionable at the time, but Olympic and Titanic didn't have any of its interiors dedicated to any of these styles. Or so you may think. If you look closely and understand what the shipbuilders were actually doing, you can definitely see the influences of the new modern styles. You may think the cabin decorations were older styles like the Louis XVI, Dutch and Italian Renaissance, but in fact, this was the Edwardian neo-baroque style of reviving older European styles. By using these styles, the Olympic class were actually on trend. The grand staircase with its old oak English panning could seem out of date with current styles. However, with it being mixed with Louis XIV's French style and Versailles influence, it fits with the new Edwardian Renaissance and arts and crafts ideology. The hand-carved ornate clock is a centrepiece representing the new trend for handmade arts and crafts style. As well as using new fashionable materials like linoleum on the floors, you can see that actually the staircase is seen as reasonably fashionable. The first class lounge could seem old fashioned compared to the opulent Lusitania and Mauritania's lounges, but in fact designed in the Louis XV style, another neo-baroque French style fashionable with Edwardians. The lounge was in fact on trend at the time. Lusitania's lounge was decorated in a much heavier English Victorian style, which was what the Edwardian style was moving against. Mauritania's lounge was however decorated in a French style and probably seen as more fashionable than Lusitania's. Olympic and Titanic's lounge would have definitely seemed far more superior to its competitors. There are other subtle Edwardian features throughout the ships. The elongated arch of the reading and writing room was not a Georgian feature, it's an Edwardian adjustment to meet modern tastes. The Veranda Café and Palm Courts were a copy of the fashionable Savoy Hotel roof garden in London, fashionable for the large arch windows and garden-like nature appeal of the Edwardian arts and craft movement and Art Nouveau. Same with the Café Parisienne. 
mixing the French style with English country garden, Edwardian and arts and crafts, creating a highly fashionable space. This is probably why it was very popular with the younger passengers on board. Many people say the first class dining room should have been a multi-storey with a dome like on the Lusitania. And the original design of the Olympic class did consider this, however the single storey was what they settled upon. There could be a few reasons for this. The Olympic class was much bigger than the Lusitania and could easily see all of first class on one floor in one sitting. But also look at modern trends for a country feel and a humble style. This is likely why they've chosen on an English Jacobean style following the arts and crafts trend, but also keeping with an old country house feel. It's also worth mentioning that Titanic wanted to attract the old money type of passenger from their old inherited country estates, as well as the new money passenger with new modern tastes. This is why they've not gone full blown at nouveau, but instead subtly incorporated it. Probably the most subtle was the aft grand staircase. It is odd to me why they've chosen to use the same style as the forward grand staircase, but I presume it's to do with continuity. But I would imagine it would cause passenger confusion. The aft staircase is smaller and less ornate as the forward grand, but look closer, it has sweeping curves of the Art Nouveau, white painted panels and an outside nature-like feel. So was the Olympic and Titanic fashionable? Yes and no. It was a subtle mix of what was happening at the time respecting the older tastes, as well as subtly incorporating the new modern styles. The shipbuilders didn't go full-blown Art Nouveau, but staying with the comfortable arts and crafts with the ideology of Art Nouveau. This did, however, date the Olympic very quickly after the First World War, and the Olympic often struggled to modernise with her interiors according to changing tastes. I think the ships are definitely of their time, and many people love them for their interiors, it's hard to imagine Titanic with a larger dining room or highly ornate decorations and I think they're geniusly designed to attract the right passenger and not exclude anyone and carefully balance modern changing tastes. What do you think? Comment below, subscribe and like the video. Also check my Instagram page rmstitanic.design